Uh, if you have your Bibles with you, we'd ask you to turn to the Song of Solomon. Uh, Sol Song of Solomon, chapter number 5. And we're going to begin reading in the very first verse. Um, now, the Song of Solomon is not preached out of much, but is very much a book that is rich in Bible truth. It is rich in um, the um, uh, things that it conveys to us as, as believers. Song of Solomon chapter 5 in the very first verse. Song of Solomon chapter 5 in the first verse, the Bible says, I am come unto the garden, my sister, my spouse. I have gathered my myrrh and my spice. I have eaten my honeycomb with my honey. I have drunk my wine and I have eaten my milk. Uh, excuse me. I have drunk my wine with my milk. Eat, O oh friends, drink abundantly, O oh beloved. I sleep. But my heart waketh. It is the voice of my beloved that knocketh, saying, Open to me, my sister, my love, my dove, my undefiled, for my, heart, my head is filled with dew, and my locks with the drops of the night. I put off my coat. How shall I put it on? I have washed my feet. How shall I defile them? My beloved put in his hand the, by the hole of the door, and my bowels were moved for him. And I rose up to open my, to my beloved, and my hands dropped with, with, drooped with myrrh, and my fingers with sweet-smelling myrrh upon the handles of the lock. I opened to my beloved, but my beloved had withdrawn himself and was gone away, and my soul failed when he uh, and my soul failed when he spake. I sought him, but I could not find him. I called him, but he gave me no answer. I'll be preaching this morning, the Lord being my helper on the thought, when the Lord leaves. Dear Lord, we thank you and praise you for another opportunity to be with your people. God, we praise you for this book and the truths that it reveals to us day after day. We thank you for that. Lord God, we pray that you would open your word to the hearts of your hearers this morning. Lord God, we pray that uh, you would manifest yourself in a great and unusual way, Lord, that, that we might worship you and fulfill uh, our obligation, which is worship to you. God, help us together as a people. We pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, uh, again, maybe some not-so-familiar scriptures uh, written by what the Bible attributes to the wisest man that ever lived that understood the going-ons of God and his character and understood the going-ons of man and his character too. And sometimes it even was a frustration to him for what he did know. Uh, you know, sometimes they say ignorance is bliss, and uh, I'll have to agree with them sometimes. Sometimes uh, I'd rather not know than what I do know. And, and so we find here that this man begins to see, and it's easy to miss if you're not careful, he begins to see the difference between religion and worshiping the Lord. He, he, he sees the difference between spiritual preparation and physical preparation to the house of God. Uh, I've said it many times recently, uh, you'll only get out of this what you came, came to prepare to receive. Right. If you didn't come to receive a great blessing, you'll go home empty. And if you came looking for something, I will guarantee you, you will leave this place fulfilled. Now, it won't be by my hand, but by the hand of the Almighty, he will fill you with something, and then this is where we lose the boat. We don't worship him for what he gives to us. We don't praise him for his filling us and comforting us along the way. And so uh, Psalm begins, he says, I come into my garden. Now, in this place, the man is just a little way 
from where the woman is sleeping. Now, I believe that the Lord God is a type of the man. I believe the woman to be a type of mankind, the, a type of the church, a type of the Jewish nation. Uh, you could go a long way with what she represents, but this morning I want her to you to represent yourself to represent the individual, to represent you, and I'll let it represent me, and I believe if we do that, we'll get a great, wonderful blessing from it. So I want you to see that the Lord is near. And what I'm telling you this morning, the Lord is near. He is close to us, He's near us, but are you ready to meet with Him? Are you prepared to be with Him? I am coming to my garden, my sister, my spouse. I have gathered my myrrh. Now, the best I understand this, he's saying, hey, I, I'm prepared. I'm here in the garden. I'm waiting for you. But what you'll find is she's asleep. Mm -hmm. She's crawled up in the bed, kicked back and sleeping. And you know what? That's the spiritual mode a lot of us stay in today. Uh, we want to be uh, bowled over by Jimmy Swagger somewhere while we do the sleeping, while we waste time. We want some kind of incredible evangelist to come and sweep us off our feet. And so he's out in the garden in the very place where the woman abides calling out to her. And I believe the Lord God of heaven today is calling out to his church to be more than we were yesterday. And yet tomorrow he'll call out us again and want us to be more tomorrow than we were today. See, his desire is for us to abide very closely, very, very near unto him. Behold, thou art fair, my love. Behold, thou art fair. Thou hast dove's eyes. Uh, within thy locks. Thy hair is as the flock of goats that appear in the Mount of Gilead. Oh, I'm sorry, that's the wrong verse. Uh, I am coming to my garden, 5-1. I am coming to my garden, my sister, my spouse. I have gathered my myrrh and my spice. Now, I want you to see that the Lord is making a preparation. Now, it's hard to get my mind around it, and maybe Brother Jarrett can help me with it after services today, that a God who is sovereign makes preparations. But according to this, he does. Uh, he, he's prepared himself for his church to meet with his people here on this Lord's Day. He says, hey, I'm ready. I made my preparations. Have you made yours? I, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to get this thing moving. Have you made yours? And, and sadly, many times, even as your pastor, I would have to say, no, I'm coming to my garden, my sister and my spouse. I have gathered my myrrh with my spice. I have eaten my honeycomb with my honey. I have drunk my wine with my milk. Eat. Now, that is her first invitation. Is it? Now, I made up a good meal. Now, you eat. I, I, I fill my belly full. Now, it's time for you. Now, in other words, the Lord Almighty, He is prepared. He's always full with the goodness of God. He's always filled with the power of the Almighty. He is always filled with strength and glory. He's always ready. And he's coming in a little bit. He, he, he outlines the meal that he's prepared. And he says, you come and eat. So the first thing I see, if we're going to come into this thing, we've got to come prepared. Now this morning, I've eaten a little bit. Donna fixed these rolls, they're Bella's favorites, and uh, I ate one of them and fed two to Joe and trying to get ready for the Lord's Day. But what did I eat spiritually? Now, I did look into the Word of God this morning, and I, I, I prepared in prayer the best I could, but what did I eat of the Word of God? 
this week, what have you eaten of the Word of God? What have you digested of the word that of the words between these pages? He gives her the invitation. The first thing he asks, come and eat. Come with me. Come and eat. Eat, old friends. Drink, yea, drink abundantly, O beloved. So the, the invitation is open. Now, this is switching now to the woman. I sleep. Her first understanding of her own condition, I sleep. Uh, I'm out of it. I'm not on point. I'm not listening. I didn't hear you. I sleep. I'm not plugged in. I'm not near to you. I'm asleep. See, many of the time, we spend a lot of the majority of our spiritual life sleeping when we should be worshiping, when we should be lifting him up. I sleep, but my heart wakens. I'm getting it. I, I, I'm starting to wake up. It is the voice of my beloved that knocketh. You know, uh, this morning, whether we want to hear it or not, or whether we want to be sleepy or not, or whether we say, well, I'm really not getting out of it, uh, you can say what you will this morning, but I guarantee you, he's knocking. He, 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 he's desiring fellowship with you. He wants to be near unto his people. It's a fellowship for him. So she's groggily waking up, and she hears him knocking. See, uh, it is a wonderful thing um, when you hear him knocking, when he's softly speaking to you, and, and, and you want to be more plugged in than you are, uh, but you're just not. You know, uh, that condition where you want to be, but you're not where I, uh, you want to be. I sleep, but my heart waketh. It is the voice of my beloved that knocketh. She understood who it was. You know the voice of the Lord. Uh, that, that's a good question for you who are supposed to be his people. Do you know when the Lord speaks to you? I do. I know the voice of my Lord. As soon as he speaks, I, I hear him. And the very, very best of my ability, I respond. I, I, I let him know, yeah, Lord, I'm listening. I hear you. I, I, I'm, I'm plugged in this morning. Tell me what you will. And, and so she recognizes her voice, his voice, excuse me. She recognizes his voice. But I want you to see uh, what she, her response is. This is the Lord's uh, invitation. Open to me, my sister, saying, My dove, my undefiled, my head is filled with dew. So he's saying, Open. You know what he's saying to you this morning? He's saying, Open. Now he can only say this to the redeemed. He calls the lost unto salvation, he calls the redeemed to fellowship. And, and that's the two big difference. You know what? He's calling us this morning to a close fellowship with them. Uh, those of you that are saved, he's drawing you unto a very tight-knit relationship with the Almighty. That's where he desires for his people to be. But I want you to see he had been there for a while. Because the dew was on his head. Now... Uh, it takes a while for dew to accumulate. In fact, I've never known it accumulate when I'm running around outside. And the reason is because I'm on the move. You have to be still for dew to accumulate. Another thing about dew, it don't start falling right, right away as soon as the sun goes down. Usually dew begins to fall around 9 or 10 p.m. And you all know when the dew is heavy, you can go up in the morning and, and run your hand across the grass and your hand will be wet with the dew. See, it takes hours for that to accumulate. So the best that I can understand, he'd been there by the majority of the night going, hey, let me in, let me in. 
I want some fellowship. I, I want to meet with you this, this evening. Please let me in. Now, that's not Armenian teaching because he is speaking to his beloved. He's speaking to an individual that is already saved. He's speaking to his sister as he puts it here. For my head is filled with dew, my locks with the drops of the night. He's been there all night waiting for her. I have put off my coat. Now, in other words, see, when, when in that day, and it's still that way very much in, in the day which we live, once we get inside the house, we put up our coat, we take a coat off and, and put it on the rack. But he's saying, I was so anticipating this. I was so looking forward to meeting with you. I've done took my coat off. I'm standing here waiting. I've got my coat on my arm. And I'm waiting for you to open this door for me. I'm waiting. You know what? Saved person, he's waiting for a greater fellowship. He's interested in meeting with you. He's interested in, in, in spending some time just you and him fellowshipping. He wants it to be that way. So he knocks on the door and says, this is what I'm doing. I have washed my feet. How shall I defile them? In other words, I'm ready to come in, I wash my feet up, and to step back on them, the street's going to get them dirty. You know, the reason why he was having to go through these options is that she just wouldn't open the door. She would not let him in to enjoy that great and wonderful fellowship that all of us that are saved know about when we spend a little time alone with the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and, and he, she just wouldn't do it. And she says, he said, listen, I'm ready for this thing. I'm prepared. And you're just sitting there. You're not even responding to what I say. My beloved put his hand by the hole of the door. Now, the way I understand uh, an old latch like that, uh, it was a latch like we have some kind on the barn. Our, our chicken house has it that just folds over into a piece of board that's like this, and it won't let the door pull through. Now, in that time, there was a hole in the door and during the day, you pulled the latch string out so you could pull the latch up because the latch was inside on my hen house. It's on the outside. But on an and interior, and, and that way you could pull it up and push the door in. And then during the day, so you'd pull your latch string through. And that way nobody could reach in and get in the door. There was no way to reach down and get the latch string. And, and, and he would, and, and so he had his fingers at the latch string trying to open it. He, 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 again, not that he wasn't sovereign, but that he desired fellowship with his people. You know why our sovereign grace churches are in the shape they're in? That's the reason why. That's the reason why. No fellowship. Uh, the latch string is latched and they're not going to get up to open it. The door is barred and they're not going to get to it. That's the reason. You know what? Uh, the preaching here is different than First Baptist. The light string is drawn through. You know why you can't get no fellowship but the general population today? is because your light string is drawn through. Mm -hmm. And we just don't care. Mm -hmm. See, we need fellowship. We, we need fellowship with the Almighty. You want something that will satisfy better than a Friday evening fellowship, and it ain't nothing wrong with them. Don't get me wrong, but you want something that will satisfy better than that, you spend some time along with the Lord. Just along you and Him, and that's it. It's a very satisfying thing. Then she says, My bowels, the inner part of my man, were moved for him. Now, uh, that part of that is Roman teaching, part of it's Jewish, Jewish teaching. They felt like the very center of everything was right here. <laughs> and so she makes this switch. I want to be with him. The very center of me, who I am, 
I want to be with the Lord. Now, that's a condition, listen, brother and sister, that don't come every day. Yeah, that don't come just by you trying. He said, she, he, she said, I want to be with him. With everything I've got, I want to be near the Lord. Now, I ask you this morning, is that your condition? And is that your situation? Do you want to hear from the Lord and spend some fellowship time with him? Or do you want to be another day at New Testament Baptist Church? And only you can answer that. It's not mine to answer. But she decided she wanted it. I rose up to open to my beloved. My hands drooped with myrrh. See, she had made some preparations too. That means she put her lotion on. That's what we think about as hand lotion. She'd smooth them up and put so much on there as dripping off. You know, uh, sometimes what we do is the wrong type of fellowship preparation. The uh, very best thing you can do, and instead of putting on your favorite dress, is spend some time alone in prayer. Yeah. very best thing you can do. I'd rather you show up in, in, in your overalls and prepared than your best dress, and that's all you've got on is your dress. And, and, and so we find then, as the Lord's people, maybe we should shift our focus in the preparation that we're doing and not so much worry about the external is preparing with the internal preparing our our soul to meet with the lord and with the lord's people then she says my finger and my fingers with sweet smelling myrrh upon the handles of the lock and so she was all prepared, had so much lotion on her, it was dripping off, and she finally got to the latch, and she was just about to let him in. Now, most of us stop right there, and we, not, we never quite raise the latch string. Because two reasons, really. Number one, we've been taught, and, and I get this, but we revel in it. Once we're saved, that's fine. You know what? What salvation should really bring in you is a constant desire to be with him more. It, it shouldn't be an end thing. Well, I'm saved. Good to go. Or we blame the times of dryness on God Almighty himself. And shame on us when he's knocking at the door. See, there's never a time that he doesn't want fellowship unless you're so filthy with sin. But this woman, this individual wasn't that way. She was a time waster. She, she drove her feet. She, she didn't care. She never got into a hurry about the things of God. So we see what happens to her in verse 6. I opened to my beloved, but my beloved had withdrawn himself. See, sometimes we wait too late. Mm hmm Sometimes because of our lack of obedience, by the time we get prepared, he's done gone. Uh, you know why the Lord ain't meeting with his people? Because by the time we get in line, he's done gone. Yeah. By the time we get ready, he's done moved on. He, he's somewhere else. And, and, and so, no doubt, the disappointment that this woman felt, she finally got enough sense together to open the door and she's opened, she's opened up the latch and she's opened the door and he's gone. My soul failed me when he spake. I sought him, but I could not find him. I answered him and he gave me no answer. Now I've been in that situation when Lord God, I, I, I'm sorry, I hate the, the sin that's got in my life. And, and there's nothing but a hollow echo when yes. you're done. Mm -hmm. I've been there. I understand what it's about. Mm -hmm. But now, she says not only that, he did not answer her. He said nothing back. He didn't come close to her and bear witness and fellowship. There was just an emptiness. And she knew it. 
She, she knew the situation exactly for what it was. Now, if you know the Song of Solomon, she's about to make a gross error. And you can read about the rest of her life this week. She goes out in the street and she looks for a fake. And you know what? There was that rich looking man that was glad to give her a fake. Yeah. But see, he left her desolate. He was a good looking man. You, you ever seen a Catholic church? When me and Donna were in Mexico, I mean literally amid squalor, you would have this huge thing raised up and look like a castle. I mean, just take your eye, the beauty was unreal. See, religion will take your eye, sure. but it will not fill your soul. Right. Religion will sweep you off your feet like this man's fixing to do to her, but when he's done with her, he threw her away like a piece of trash. Mm -hmm. Religion will do that to you. Mm -hmm. uh, it all looks good on the surface, but there's no spiritual value there. And so we find then we better take the opportunity for worship while we have it. Don't be embarrassed. You know, you know why she didn't run to the door? She was embarrassed. She wasn't prepared either, I don't think, because see, if she heard that more on there, that, uh, that frankincense, when she was just getting ready, it'd be soaked in. It wouldn't be dripping. And so I, I don't think she was quite, quite ready for him. And because of that, she missed her opportunity for fellowship. Uh, and many times today, we miss our opportunity with fellowship because of things that get into our life. Now, I want you very quickly to go with me to the book of Psalms. Uh, Psalms uh, 38. Uh, this is David, Solomon's father. And uh, he, he had the same battles that Solomon did. Uh, Psalms 38, in the first verse, David writes, O Lord, rebuke me not in thy wrath, neither chasten me in thy hot displeasure. Now, if you follow this, I personally believe two, one or two things about Psalms 38. It was either after his experience with Bathsheba, the wife of Uriah, that Brother Junior read to us about this morning, or it was much later, because see, David was a ladies' man, and he could not contain his lust. You say whatever you want to by David. The Bible is very clear. He was a man after God's own heart. I believe that David was a saved man, but he was a whoremonger at the very top of the list. That was his nature. And he could not get away from it. And because of that, you'll see that he had some diseases that he had to cry out to the Lord about. You know what? We have some spiritual diseases that we need to cry to the Lord about. O oh Lord, forgive me not in, my, in, in thy wrath, neither chasten me in thy hot displeasure, for thine arrows stick fast to me. My hand uh, presseth me, thy hand presseth me sore. There's no soundness in my flesh because of the ang by thy anger, neither is the, there any rest in my bones for my sin, for my iniquities have gone over my head. Now, we begin to get where... Number one, he's kind of crying out to God, God, don't be so mad at me. And then in verse 4, he says, I know the problem. My iniquity, I'm drowning in my own iniquity. My iniquity's gone over my head now. See, most of us don't want to worship bad enough to say that. But David did. David was so interested in, in fellowship with the Lord that, that he was willing to acknowledge whatever Whatever the cost to be with the Lord, for my iniquities are gone over my head as a heavy burden. They are too heavy for me. My wounds stink, and that is literal. Uh, I believe that's why he had this disease. My wounds stink. They are corrupt. Why? Because of my foolishness. You know what? It's very foolish to come to this house unprepared. Amen. Yeah. It's very foolish to come here and leave this place empty. 
It's very foolish to come here without the intent to worship the Almighty. That's why we come. I'm troubled. I'm bowed down greatly. I go mourning all the day long. Uh, for my loins are filled with a loathsome disease, and there is no soundness in my flesh. Sin has a price. I am feeble and sore broken. I, I have roared by reason of my disquietness of my heart. It was really broken down. Verse 15, drop down there with me. For in thee, Lord, do I hope. Thou wilt hear, O oh my God. So he hoped God would hear him. Now, here's the difference between us and others that call themselves Baptists. We hope he hear because we know he doesn't have to. They say, you know, they, they preach to God, if you say frog, God's going to jump. But see, that's not the God of the Bible, is it? So David stood in hope. Maybe if I confess this thing, he'll meet with me. Maybe if I make this thing right, I'm going to hope to that end. I'm going to hope that he might meet with us. Uh, I, I'm going to hope and pray that God would come down and send a revival that we'll be talking about for years to come. I'm going to hope that. Verse 16, For I said, Hear me, lest otherwise they should rejoice over me. And when my foot slippeth, they magnify themselves against me. Now, I want you to see, he talks about the enemy. And let me tell you very briefly about the enemy, and we're going to close. But now, one day, if we don't stick to the stuff, you have people driving by, back and forth. If they could see this building closed with the windows boarded over, they'd be glad. Yeah. They'd be happy. Yeah. They, they feel like mission accomplished. And David said, don't let them do that. Don't let them make fun of me because they know I'm the enemy of God right now. Mm -hmm. See, it's honoring to God when God's people honor Him. You see what I'm saying? Right, right. And if we don't, He's not lifted up. And what ends up happen, happening is that He leaves us and the windows are boarded shut and the door has a padlock on it and nobody comes anymore to the house of God. And David did not want to embarrass his Lord in that way. Verse 17, for I'm ready to halt and my sorrow is continually before me. I, uh, I, I'm ready to stop. That's what halt means. Halt. Don't go there. Or, or halting the horse when he's pulling against you. See, are you ready to stop or halt this morning enough to worship God? You see, it takes a little time. We might be here at 1230 instead of 12. Yeah. See, it, it, it takes a little time. And he said, Lord, I'm ready just to stop whatever if you'll just meet with me. I, I, I want to worship you. I, 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 I'm sick of the situation that I am in. I'm prepared whatever it takes. Verse 18. For I will declare mine iniquity. I will be sorry for my sin. Now, two things. First of all, he said, I'll declare it. I'll confess it. I'll make it right. And I really am sorry. See, a lot of times sorrow is, is almost overpassed today. Because it's no longer sorrow. It's sorry I got caught. See, real sorrow over sin will break your heart. And you'll be so sad that you, that you let the Lord down that much. That you, that, that you weren't careful with what He gave you. That you weren't, that you weren't uh, thankful enough of His redemption. And so you let it go. Now, the flip side is, well, I'm embarrassed that they caught me. No sorrow, just embarrassment. 
And, and there, there's a huge difference there. So we find that David finally gets down to the point where whatever the cost, he wanted fellowship back with the Lord. Forsake me not, O Lord, O my Lord, O my God. Be not far from me. Make haste to help me, O Lord, my salvation. Forsake me not. Uh, you know what New Testament Baptist needs? For us to worship the Lord and for Him to meet with us. That, that's what New Testament needs. You know what uh, Faith Baptist Church of Murray needs? They need to worship the Lord and the Lord would meet with them. You know what Faith Baptist of Clarksville needs? They need the same thing. Yeah. You know what Son of You Baptist Church needs? They need the same thing. And what, wherever they're at, whatever they're doing, because it's Sunday, it's the Lord's Day, it's time to worship. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's not time to, you know what, I, I'm embarrassed and, and I want to get to the meal downstairs and I'm hungry. It's time to worship. Yeah. That's it. To give him praise. Listen, he saved your never dying soul when there was no obligation to him to do it. He went to the cross of Calvary and, and spread himself out there. And, and, and to the very moment he finally, he finally says he gave up the ghost. And right before he said that, he said, it's finished. In other words, the atonement is complete. Right? I'm done. It's finished. And then we can't give him two seconds to say, yes, praise the Lord. You say, well, I can't think of anything to praise him for. Well, that bed is full, ain't it? You didn't sleep with the dew last night, did you? That's something to praise God for, is it not? And oh, we, we have so much more. You know what? The Lord has blessed the United States so much, we don't even know what to praise him for. That's right. Amen. I had an experience when I was down in Mexico, and, and their system is very, their, ecos, their um, economic system is very different than us. Those people are very, very poor. And we met with the people, they're not there, but their building was, uh, I'm trying to think how to explain it, y'all know what it is. It looks like tin, but it's plastic. You know, they used to put it at the top of barn so light would come down in the barn. Yeah. Their whole building was made out of that. And I guarantee you, magnified through that Mexico sun, I bet you it's 110 degrees in there. I never sweated so much in my life when I was trying to preach. And then when it was all over, they wanted to have fellowship with us. And they brought out some kind of punch. I don't know exactly what it was. I know this, Matthew wouldn't drink it. Adam drank some of it. But Matthew wouldn't drink it. And it looked good to me. It was kind of like a pink color and something floating in it. Um, but you know what? That's the best they had. They were ready to worship, were they not? Mm -hmm. And I tell you, after that preaching in that hot building, I, I would have drunk about anything. <laughs> and uh, mm -hmm. so they were ready to worship. And when we look around, and we have this unbelievable building, and uh, nobody to bother us. Yeah. And we don't worship it. Uh, I, I don't. Get, I don't get it, and then I do. It, this is the thing, it takes time. And seemingly, there's none of that anymore. You rush, 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 and still don't get everything done you wanted to in a day. But I really believe if we just take time to worship, all the rest of it will fall in place, don't you? Yeah. yeah. Well, what does the Bible say concerning tithing? It is on the first fruits, according to Malachi 4, right? Mm. And this is the Lord's Day. It's the first day of the uh, American week. And we just need to take time for him. We just need to worship. We just need to lift him up and let, and let the rest of the week fall, fall in its place. Because it will. 